generations, coal has been the backbone of West Virginia. My father, my uncles, my grandfathers, I was born and raised in a coal family. Coal drives this country and keeps the lights on. Until jobs were wiped out by the tens of thousands. Machinery does most of the work. They don't need nearly as many human beings to do the same amount of coal. Now there's a new opportunity, green energy, but it's at odds with this region's DNA. As the rest of the country races to set up renewable power, creating hundreds of thousands of jobs so far, will West Virginia be able to put its people back to work and continue to power America for the next generation? We have been told that this is who we are. We're coal miners. For generations, West Virginia coal was the lifeblood of American industry. It heated our homes and made the steel that built our cities. Coal still produces nearly a third of America's electricity. Mingo County. This is the heart of coal country. Heart of coal country. Uh, there was at one time five different mines here producing coal. It's an old coal bank. Uh, what we call, what they got a house called. Like, people just cut into the mountain here to dig out coal for uh, themselves. Right. Is this a, a fairly common thing people did? Yeah, and I've done it with my dad. Eight, nine year old, I can remember when I was doing that. Even before anyone was of working age, they were surrounded by coal. Yeah, around here they were. Is there still coal? There's still coal in here. Oh, yeah. Yep. If you do this nowadays, you, they put you in a pen. <laughs> How long had you worked in mining? For 26 years. 26 years. Uh, I worked over 50,000 hours underground. 50,000? 50,000 50, hours. hours underground. I worked a lot of overtime. So looking at this map, I mean, we are, we are quite literally in the, in the middle of coal country. We're surrounded by coal mines. Former coal mines. Coal mines that no longer exist. That's what we're surrounded by. Someone would say, well, that mountain's full of coal. Yeah, that mountain's still full of coal. Up and down it in places where they couldn't mine everything. But it's not full of coal that they can get in there and mine and make money off. Many towns here wouldn't exist today without coal. But over the last three decades, 60% of coal jobs in the U.S. have been lost. And in West Virginia, dozens of towns that coal once built are either being abandoned or are struggling to survive. Back during the heyday of coal, this town was known as the New York City of West Virginia. On a Saturday night, you wouldn't be able to find parking. And today, you'd be lucky to find more than just a small handful of shops that are even open. In 1950, coal mines employed over 100,000 people in West Virginia. Today, only about 14,000 work in coal. Coal miners are back to work. They're back to work. But promises are being made to put miners back to work. Thank you, West Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. But some say that even if coal production was to rebound, the jobs wouldn't follow. So I want to stand here because this little mountain mound behind me is a good way to talk about mountaintop removal and what it really is. Paul Brown is the son of a retired coal miner and is an anti-coal industry activist. His organization campaigns against the type of surface mining called mountaintop removal, which it says is far more damaging to the environment, including to drinking water. So how do they do it? Well, the first thing they do is they come up and they push all the trees over. Huge machines come in and push that rock into the valleys, increasing that valley fill. Eventually, they get to the first layer of coal and they scoop it up. Mountaintop removal also relies more on machines to do the work than people. With the mountaintop removal, 90% of the, the workforce was let go. I mean, they don't need nearly as many human beings to do the same amount of coal. There's machinery and what? Machinery does most of the work, machinery and explosives. Surface mining, along with automation, 
has meant a permanent reduction in the labor force here. While mining jobs have dropped a staggering 88.6% since 1950, coal production in West Virginia has only decreased about 33%. So there it is. This is uh, what was once the highest part of this mountain. This is what's left of it. Wow. We were kind of looking, we were looking up at wow. the operation. This is just one. There's over 500 of these that we've counted that this has been done to. Do you think there is a way forward for West Virginia without coal? We have for generations been told that this is who we are, that we're coal miners. We've been told for generations this is our lot in life. They've wrapped the American flag around it. They've made a patriotic issue. Beating this drum, coal, 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 as if there's no other music in the world. My father, my uncles, my grandfathers, uh, my brother, uh, I was born and raised in a coal family. Coal raised me and raised all three of my kids too until I made the transition. Yeah. So what, what happened? The coal mine that I was working at, it, uh, it started downhill. And I had the opportunity to make a change, and I took the gamble. Yeah. I took the gamble, and I made the change, and I think it turned out pretty well. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There you are. They say they're a lot bigger up close. A lot bigger. That's one thing that I did not expect to see in the, uh, in the coal country in West Virginia, wind turbines. All right, here we go to the inner workings. This is the brains. This is the brains of the operation. All the crews have large canvas or vinyl bags yeah. that we hook to the hoist and oh, uh, <laughs> take it up. You've got to manually go up. Absolutely. Yeah, we have to manually go up. You know, when you first started looking into uh, into switching from coal to wind, did your buddies give you a lot of shit? Like they your did. buddies at the coal mine? They did. Yeah, what'd they say? They I just, you know, when are you gonna get your wooden shoes? And <laughs> you know, I, I heard all the tree hugger comments and I heard all that. And of course, just to play along, as soon as I made the transition, I went and bought a Subaru. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> wow, you went, you went full, full circle. But it's funny that now it's those same people that are calling me for a job. <laughs> I, I get calls almost on a weekly basis, are you guys gonna be hiring soon? And it's guys that I used to work in the mines with. So I, I think they realize that it's less of a competitive thing now, and it's more of, it's a job, it's a future. Yeah. You know, I've got no interest competing with the coal mine. I've got an opportunity right here that I can earn a living for my family and produce some energy. So that's my main concern. In the US, green energy production is on the rise. 350,000 worked in wind and solar alone in 2017. But in West Virginia coal country, some are skeptical of change. What is it like to run a solar business in the heart of coal country? I have a hard time believing that most business owners have to do, have to deal with what I have to deal with. Doyle Tenney worked for years in the coal industry as an electrician before leaving to start his own solar company. He started a solar business in a state that knows absolutely nothing about solar still to this day. Coal in this state is embedded in the souls of people. And I am not against coal. I am for the future. Are there any sort of institutional things that are stepping in your way that keep solar from really taking off? The state legislature itself is saying no to solar. They're not passing power purchase agreements and in the same year that we proposed the power purchase agreements and to use abandoned coal mines for uh, solar production, you know, solar generation facilities, 
And they shut that down, and then within a week later, they give $60 million to the coal industry. Power purchase agreements are the primary way solar panels are sold in the U.S. because outfitting a roof with them costs between ten dollars and $30,000. With a power purchase agreement, customers can pay that expense off over years. But in West Virginia, the entire cost of a solar system must be paid for up front. The state legislature needs to approve power purchase agreements. They need to enact uh, incentives on the same scale that they do for coal. While some coal states like Texas and New Mexico lead in green energy production, only 2% of West Virginia's energy comes from renewables. What is keeping wind and solar from really taking off here in West Virginia? It's two things. Um, one is that West Virginia doesn't have the incentives for renewable energy like most other states have. But the other thing is that the legislat legislature keeps passing bills that, um, that support the coal industry. Now, is the coal industry actively engaged in, in thwarting the competition? Yeah, they are. The, the Coal Association has one of the strongest lobbies in the legislature, and um, their narrow interest is to burn as much coal as possible, and that means um, that they don't want competition from renewables. We have too many policymakers that are trying to make our future economy look like our past economy. And what's going on, meanwhile, is that all these new economy jobs are being created in every other state, and they're just passing us by. While unemployed miners are waiting for jobs to open up in renewable power, many retired miners are struggling with the lasting impacts of the decades they spent underground. Hey, Pop. Hey, buddy. How you doing? How you All right. That's my buddy, huh? All right. Good <clears throat> to see you, Pop. You too, son. Paul's father is suffering from health complications, including black lung, a debilitating condition resulting from his long-term exposure to coal dust. Growing up, uh, every morning we would hear him rustling around the kitchen, heading off to work, and we knew what was involved. We'd all heard the stories of how people came to be orphaned, mine explosions or, or mines caving in. And so it was always a grave concern that he would go to work one morning and he might not come back that night. Well, it's kind of a family tradition. Yeah. Right? Cold, dark, and raining, and we get it all done then? Yeah, that's what we get it done. It was a thankless job, Pop. Well, I don't think so. No, I had the thanks of my family, so that made it worthwhile. Hello, buddy. Paul's dad is receiving good care for his medical condition. But many here accuse the coal industry of increasingly working to strip miners of their hard-earned benefits. Good morning, everybody. So my name's Stephen Smith. Uh, I was born in Charleston, West Virginia, 39 years ago. Democrat Stephen Smith is campaigning to be West Virginia's 37th governor in 2020. Terry Steele organized a meeting with fellow miners to make sure their concerns are part of any policy agenda. And we're looking at retirement. We're looking at... Uh, health care. We're looking at things like that that these other young miners that are working now are not looking at. Our needs are, for the retired people are not being looked at. Uh, take care of all the coal miners. We made West Virginia. We're making sure they get their pensions, their uh, health care, their uh, black lung, things that they, they earned. Mm -hmm. People agree with that? This stuff isn't rocket science, right? So why doesn't, why doesn't this happen? Because you've got coal lobbyists for lawmakers. Yeah. They ain't going to do this. That's right. Well, they need to do it with the lobbyists. lobbyists. Yeah. But they're like ticks on a dog, man. You can't get them out. Yeah, you no. can't get them out. Despite efforts to revitalize the coal industry, 2018 saw U.S. coal consumption drop to its lowest level in four decades. With far few miners working, it's estimated that the pension fund for retired miners will be insolvent in less than five years. What are we looking at here? This is the red jacket, uh, middle school and grade school. You attended? That I attended. When you look at this, 
Does this make you sad? Yes, it's, it's sad. When you're in the, the extraction industry, sooner or later this is gonna happen. We have suffered a lot dividing cheap energy to the rest of this country. If I'm a miner and I hear you saying what you're saying, I would look at you and say, you know, you provided for yourself based on, you know, on the backs of coal. And of anybody who should understand my plight, it's you. Okay. We let coal companies walk away from responsibilities that they had to retired miners. They dumped these onto the taxpayers to take care of these benefits. While the stockholders and these coal companies went scot-free through bankruptcy laws. Now, who voted for people who set bankruptcy laws in place like that? Don't get mad at me. Get mad at that man or woman who voted for someone who said, a coal company can walk away scot-free from what the responsibilities they had to you. And then the taxpayers get stuck with it. What is the Coal Association? Our role is basically to be an advocate for the industry and you know, everything that we do should be working towards the betterment of the coal industry. Do you think there is a sense that the people here in West Virginia feel as though their culture is under attack when you hear about solar or wind coming in? I think it's more about a sense that we have that the playing field hasn't been even. You know, there's a lot of uh, fiscal policy incentives for the, for the renewable portfolio. One of the interesting interviews that we had a couple weeks ago was with a, with a, a young man who runs a solar panel installation mm -hmm. business. This is just one of a handful of states that uh, does not allow for purchasing power agreements. And he had pointed to the coal lobby, the coal industry, as being one of the drivers of that. Uh, you know, I represent the coal lobby. We've not, we've not played in that whatsoever. You know, we have never made that a, a, a political issue. You know, I think it's been more from the, from the public utility company that has all this investment in coal. Many retired miners that we spoke to really kind of echoed a lot of the same sentiment. We feel abandoned by the state and by the companies we work for. Uh, many of the companies we work for have, have filed, strategically filed bankruptcies, and so they're off the hook when it comes to pensions. As the voice of the coal industry, I, I would imagine that there has to be some voice and some f compassion for the people who, who helped drive profits for, for the companies that you represent, and yet they're the ones who are sort of left holding the bag. Well, you know, once again, over the past, I think, uh, I think three, four years ago, uh, you know, upwards of 50 percent of the coal produced here in West Virginia was being produced by companies that were in bankruptcy. And I think every single one of them, uh, you know, strictly adhered to all the provisions that's within the bankruptcy laws governing companies in this country. Certainly, they followed mm -hmm. the letter of the law. This is mm -hmm. within within the realm of bankruptcy protection. Um, doesn't make it feel right or, or no. I agree just with that. I don't, dis I don't disagree with that. But again, I don't think that's unique to mining. You know, I you pick up the paper and every day you read where someone's someone's uh, you know somebody uh, you know lost pension, lost health care. Uh, you know, people lose their savings. People lose their four hundred one k because they had invested with the wrong person or wrong group. Uh, and, and, you know, you have to have compassion for that. What does the future of the coal industry look like here in West Virginia? I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great question. We, we, we deal with like a three to five year forecast. That's as far as our crystal ball goes. Uh, and and it, looks, uh, it looks pretty, pretty promising. But the idea of coal jobs coming flooding back is not going to happen. I don't think we're going to see that. With, but with that said, we're still a real strong piece of the state economy here. The coal industry continues to be a major donor in West Virginia state politics. In 2018, just five state representatives received nearly a quarter million dollars between them. When you hear political rhetoric about resaving the mining industry, it's not about the miners. 
It's not. They make you think it's about the miners. What Friends of Coal really is, is a huge propaganda organization set up by coal companies that lobby and fight for benefits where Wall Street, who owns them, can make more money. And they do it off of the poor people in these areas who believe that propaganda bullshit. Mm. I don't regret that I made my living from mining coal, mm. you know, and I don't regret the stands that I take on it right now. Yeah. You want to see the jobs come back? Uh, I want to see jobs come back, yes. I want people to have good paying jobs, good paying union jobs. I just don't think they're going to be in the mining industry. How tall is this? Where we'll be, it's right at 300 feet. <laughs> Spectacular. It is. It is. I love my office. I spent nine years looking through a windshield of a piece of equipment, and I traded it in for this. I think I made a pretty good trade. I can't tell if it's the, uh, the wind turbine shaking or if it's just me trembling in fear. <laughs> Maybe a little of both. Probably. Maybe a little of both. We're seeing power being generated right That's now. That's right. That's right. How many turbines do you have here in this field? We have 67 on this farm, on the wind farm. I mean, West Virginia, this is my first time in West Virginia. Right. It is beautiful. Yes, I mean, the, the, land, the, the, the land is stunning. But one of the things the critics say is, you know, you're you're spoiling this beautiful landscape with the, these ugly turbines. Well, perfect example. If you look over there, you see a strip mine. I mean, I don't think there's a comparison. I, I we we don't we don't disturb the land nearly as much as other industries do. That to me, that's innovation. Yeah. You know, that, that's not ugly to me. We have everything that we need to be a competitor to some of the, the Midwest states, Texas and some of those states that they're going largely renewable. West Virginia's just getting its foot in the door. And we, we have a big, we have a bright future in this state as long as we get the support. You think that West Virginia can return to its glory days? There's no question. Absolutely. I think that we can return back to an, an actual contributing state, an important state in this overall economy that we're looking for. You know, we have resources in our state that we can become important again. Absolutely.